And I'm definitely calling my season uh, delayed, but not denied. And I've organized it into pretty much a scrapbook. So we're going to take um, moments to kind of look at how, um, how different things manifested. And so if I were to organize this as a book, I would definitely say the first chapter was alignment and alignment with God's will. Um, I've always been intentional uh, since I was young to and curious about what God's plan and purpose is for my life. Um, I've known that I have been a storyteller. Um, I am someone that has always been expressive. I have family on the line and friends that can attest to that for sure. Um, but, you know, I was praying a lot about what God's plan was for me, especially when I discovered that I had a passion for film and entertainment. And I'm thinking, is this, you know, a career path for me? Is this something that I can do? And, um, you know, there was a lot of doubt uh, involved in that and trying to navigate that on my own. But um, I want to share a scripture that was really pivotal to me because I was making all these plans in my head and these goals I had of what I wanted to achieve. Um, but Proverbs 19.21 tells us, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a planner by nature for the most part. I love making lists, uh, ch checklists of any kind, uh, even enjoy calendars. Don't get me started on sticky notes. Like that's just my thing. But at the end of the day, I had to release that my plan for my life, first of all, was not in control. It was not about my plan. It was always about God's plan. Um, and that really allowed me to understand like what God was doing in my life. Um, and, you know, I did, you know, have a lot of things I was navigating with film and entertainment. Um, I knew that I loved it, but I hadn't really stepped out and had an opportunity until 2016 when I did the Nate Parker Summer Film Institute in Wiley, Texas. Uh, and there I really was able to have a transformative experience um, as a filmmaker. Uh, we came there and we had a week to um, basically learn about Black history, but then also the technical aspects of film. So I came as an aspiring filmmaker and I left as a filmmaker and screenwriter. Um, but believe it or not, and some of you uh, have gone to Hampton with me, I still started at Hampton as a political science major with a minor in film. And um, I was still a little bit hesitant, like, is this really what I want? Is this my dream or is it a God dream? And that's the clarity that I've been seeking along the way. Um, but I was uh, able to, by the end of my freshman year, change my major to strategic communication with a minor in film. So walking a little bit more aligned with what I felt was my purpose. And that led to amazing opportunities like interning. Um, and I got to travel to LA. I went in, out there to do an internship with BET. And it was there in LA that I had um, a fleeting encounter that I'm going to talk about more. Um, this picture right now is actually from 2012. I went through my old Outlook email and, uh, and I found this. It was literally a picture from then. Um, 2012 was a really, really special uh, time. So I'm going to rewind a bit to tell you about it. Um, in 2012, I really feel like God placed a very, very special calling on my life, which was to tell a very uh, impactful story. Um, called The Last Messengers, uh, which is about a Seventh-day Adventist Christian family that is evangelizing and also journeying across the country while fleeing religious per persecution. So wait, kind of heavy, kind of a lot. How does one even go about telling a story like that? I'm like hearing this from God and visualizing how it can manifest as a film and quite overwhelmed. I'm thinking, am I the right person to tell it all these different things? Um, and, you know, again, I was about 12 or 13 uh, at the time. I think around that time I had been baptized, uh, but I still felt, you know, is this really the calling of my life? So we'll pick back up to um, my internship in LA and at BET. There I had a fleeting encounter with an institution that has become so important to me. Um, in addition to doing everything I was doing with BET, I was, you know, getting out and trying to like see LA, do a lot of fun things. And I remember one day I was with a friend and they were driving entirely too fast. It's kind of the thing out there to drive really fast. Unfortunately, I soon found out. Um, but I remember us whizzing by and I saw something. It was three letters and a star and the letters were AFI and the star of its logo. 
and AFI is the American Film Institute. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, I've heard that this is like a, a pretty major film school, but at this point, I was not thinking about grad school at all. Like, you put another desk in front of me, I will flip it, I'm ready to get out of here, all that good stuff. So, you know, it kind of came and went so quickly, but, you know, I never could have known that that would be such a, um, that fleeting encounter would turn into such a deep desire of my heart. Um, so I wound up returning back to Hampton. Um, and what I did there is that um, I was encouraged and equipped by Hampton professors. Some of you all may know them. Um, you know, we have Professor Earl and Professor Balls that are really the heart of the film program at Hampton. And um, while I was there, Professor Balls encouraged me to apply to AFI screenwriting program. And now I'm connecting the dots. I'm like, isn't AFI that school that like we drove really quickly past and like, hmm, like this is now coming back into, uh, into focus. Um, and both of them really encouraged me and equipped me to apply to film schools, including AFI. Uh, and they both connected me to alum of the school that were happy to talk to me about their experience. Uh, Professor Earl is always doing a fantastic job bringing opportunities to Hampton for film students. And she connected me to Joy Cherie, who became a mentor of mine and connected me to a woman named Chris, who you guessed it, was an alum of AFI. Um, and so all these people were part of my alignment, part of God. Uh, God was using them to um, really pave out my path. And it was very exciting. Um, and so what happened next is, next is that I did apply. I was very excited to get an interview. Um, and then I prepared to the point of knowing like the interviewers, like birthdays, like all of that, just to set the rapport and set the tone. It was a great conversation. And I left feeling really confident, confident enough to, as you can see in this picture, um, go to the AFI Silver Theater um, with my mom. And uh, I felt it was crazy that AFI, the school out in LA, had a theater close to me. So I really felt like a lot of things are really like intentionally happening here, like, wow. And I took this picture there having applied to AFI and still um, waiting for the decision. Um, and it was just amazing to see that um, this was, you know, becoming really real in my mind to even just go there and step out um, and claim it. You know, that was kind of like my way to claim it and say, you know, I'm already out here part of the AFI community. Like my interview went great. I feel like I know what's happening next. But we know that God is in control. God has his perfect timing and his perfect will. And I never could have known what would come next. Uh, first of all, COVID hit. I could have never known this would be my last pre-COVID in theater experience. And I don't think any of us saw a pandemic coming. So that completely switched up the game for everything. I mean, you know, a lot of us remember having to leave Hampton, being told it was gonna be two weeks. It turned out to be the rest <laughs> of the semester. Um, and while I was, you know, coming back home and everything, uh, I was, you know, I was not knowing that there was another big uh, chapter of my life coming ahead because uh, I checked my email one day and I found that my dream had been delayed. This is my actual rejection letter from AFI all, um, which I was not very happy to receive. <laughs> um, it was definitely a punch in the gut. Uh, it definitely felt like the dream that I had of um, having the chance to go to an institution and further my passion and my love for film was slipping out of my fingers. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I immediately went internal. Is this something having to do with me? Am I, um, you know, is there something that I'm trying to will into my life or is this God's will for my life? Uh, or maybe, maybe just keep going and maybe film school is just not for me. But, you know, this delay period was really, really a big part of my waiting season. Uh, a very disappointing part, but very real. And, you know, I had to realize that I needed to push forward and to just continue to believe in God. Although I'm not gonna lie guys, it was very challenging, um, very disappointing, um, but it led to me embracing something on the next chapter of my life, which I would call obedience and isolation. Isolation, of course, uh, for this instance, definitely means quarantine. I think a lot of us were trying to navigate how does one graduate into a pandemic or do virtual school or get a job in a pandemic? Like, now what? How do we deal with this time? And it was really my obedience uh, in isolation that 
made such a big difference and really, I think, catapulted me to the next chapter of my life, even beyond this, because it was those choices that I made um, in obedience uh, during this period that changed the game for me, for sure. Um, and one of those big things for me was definitely um, after I was able to get past somewhat the disappointment of AFI, I'm looking at quarantine and saying, okay, how much can I really do in this season? How much can I uh, challenge myself to do? Uh, and I wound up getting my first post-grad job, albeit virtual. I was a job coach, um, getting on Google Meet on the weekdays and, and talking to like Baltimore City youth. Um, I wound up doing a remote personal assistant role um, with a filmmaker that Joyce connected me to. Uh, I, was, I cast my family in a short film. Like I was pretty much doing the most, um, but I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna have this time, that it would be time well spent. And um, the, you know, obedience and isolation really, really sticks out to me because, you know, I had to really listen to what God was trying to say. Uh, and I think all of us, hopefully in quarantine, took the time to slow down a bit and to process um, what God is trying to say and reach us. Um, and also something very beautiful happened uh, in this season of my life in obedience and isolation is that God took this amazing blessing I could have never have seen coming and plopped it right into my lap. Um, and if I was in the only grad school that I applied to, I applied to another school, to other schools. And I remember, uh, and I think my mom is uh, with us here and my sisters, I'm happy to have them. Um, literally talking about the next chapter of my life, like mid argument, what is my next season gonna be? What is my next move gonna be after graduation? And I was getting frustrated, uh, but I was in front of my laptop, which I am too often in front of my laptop. Uh, and I opened an email and I was like, I think I just got accepted to Columbia. And my mom was like, what? And came over and we looked at the email and the, the recommendation letter it was like fire, fire, fireworks across the screen and just super excited. And this was really the part of my story that I should have just thrown my hands up and been like, God, you are clearly in control here because I never, ever, ever could have seen this coming. But I got accepted to Columbia University not only did I get accepted, uh, but also to the HBCU fellowship program, which meant that my tuition and my housing was covered. Um, and this was so unexpected, like such a blessing. And I was just thinking like, wow, like this whole time I've been trying to go out to LA and God is saying, you're gonna go to New York. Um, and it was just such a fantastic moment. This uh, picture is actually from the first night that I moved into my apartment, which I'm coming to you live from. Um, and, you know, this was somewhat of a detour, though, because I was going to study strategic communication at uh, Columbia, not film, but certainly uh, has some similarities to storytelling. So I really had to um, put aside what I felt was going to be my perfect next step, um, going right into film. And I think that being here, I'm learning, you know, things that God would um, would position me for later. So this was such an amazing, amazing blessing. I'm very grateful to be here at Columbia. And actually during this initial quarantine period that I had uh, moving in, um, if you guys remember The Last Messengers, a story I told you about when I was about 12 that was placed on my heart. I took the time during my quarantine moving into Columbia to actually finish the first draft of the feature length script for The Last Messengers. Uh, I poured a ton of time into it. I was like literally like willing my eyelids open like long hours of the night. Uh, the script is um, at least 150 pages. Um, and I had a really, really um, ambitious goal of finishing it within that time frame, and I did. So it was a very, very rough draft. But again, obedience and isolation. Here's a calling that I felt God placed on my heart uh, that 10 years later, I would finish, but finish nonetheless. And I was saying to God, um, I think by doing that, you know, I'm going to be obedient to hearing what you're going to do. And, and I could never have known then that that obedience would uh, allow God to open even more doors for me. Um, something else that was a huge light to me uh, during isolation was godly community. Um, I've pictured a lot of people here uh, on the screen that you see that have been pivotal in my spiritual journey. Um, 
I haven't pictured all of them. There's certainly more people that are not um, on the screen. Um, I'm sure some that have, you know, even joined the call perhaps. Um, and um, these people, <laughs> they kept me deeply rooted. They prayed with me um, and just were, um, where most of them did and, and just kept me very rooted. Um, and, you know, I'll touch briefly on some of my experiences uh, growing up as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. It has been difficult and challenging for me at times to find community, to be in spaces uh, for God and to show up as my full self, um, to recognize that none of us are perfect and that I shouldn't expect myself to be. Um, there's certain pressures that can weigh on you when it comes to that. Um, and, you know, I realized that that was impacting my relationship with church. And um, when I came to Columbia, I was praying that God would really soften my heart to let down my guard, to, um, to put myself in spaces where I could meet people that were people of faith. So what do I mean by godly community? Um, believers, uh, people that believe in God, um, and people that hold you accountable to saying, to being who you say you are. I realized so much that what I was really resisting was less of like fellowship and more of resisting accountability. Because when you get around people that um, are prayed up and walking uh, in their purpose that God has set out for them, they're going to challenge you to raise your standards as well. And they're gonna be able to um, give you counsel and give you support and love uh, the way God calls us to love others. Uh, and so this was a game changer for me, for sure. And um, around this time, I actually decided to reapply to AFI. I was gonna shoot my shot again. And I remember talking to some Christians that I had got connected with through the HPC Fellowship. And um, I remember telling them about my, uh, my samples, the writing samples I was gonna apply with. And I mentioned the last messengers, not expecting that anybody would really suggest that I submit it, but I had a friend uh, named Alex encourage me to submit it. And I'm thinking, faith-based content, secular institution, like this is my second chance at my dream school. Like I don't want anything to be holding me back. And I shouldn't have felt that way. I'm being honest with you guys. I shouldn't have felt that way, but I did. And I'm so grateful that God allowed me um, and granted me the wisdom and, um, and the strength to push past those doubt and fears because I, I did pray on it. Um, and I ultimately came to the decision to submit my writing sample for, for the last messengers. Um, and so again, crazy to think that something that God placed on my heart uh, at around 12 uh, will manifest or now when I'm around like 22. Um, but I submitted that. I wound up getting another interview. Uh, and this time I was not playing any games. <laughs> I was playing no games to the point of, and my family uh, could tell you about this, fasting for 15 days leading up to the interview. I was having protein, protein shakes and stuff like that. But I was, my aim was, hey, how can I get as focused as possible to not only show God that I'm so grateful to have the opportunity, but I am taking it seriously. I'm willing to sacrifice for it. And I'm willing to, to wait on um, God, at least that was, you know, as I reflect, um, perhaps part of my desire to do that. Um, and so, again, godly community really opened the doors for that to happen for sure. Um, and so I reapplied. Um, at this time, I was, you know, getting ready for that interview. I did everything that I felt um, in my power to prepare, but I could never have expected it would lead to the great disappointment. <laughs> Some of my SDA brothers and sisters probably know what I'm alluding to there, um, but it was pretty much the worst interview I've ever had. I'm, it, was, it was bad. Uh, it can be difficult to read body language and energy uh, through Zoom, which was, you know, my interview was virtual. Um, I was responding to things and they were saying, oh, we've, had, we've heard this before. And I'm like, whoa, like, yikes. Uh, there was technical issues, like I got kicked out of the interview and back in, like it was, it was a mess to the point of when I, when it was done, I realized like a self-talk, um, you need to be okay with that, not actually going the way you thought, because we both know that was pretty bad. Um, and I remember taking out a notebook and I wrote down everything I can remember saying and everything I can remember them asking, because I said, you know, if I have to go for this thing a third time, at least I'm going to remember what not to do. 
Um, and so that really just speaks to something that's also been a huge theme of this journey of mine is persistence. Um, and, you know, it was a gut punch, though. It was definitely, I felt like a setback. I felt like here I had another opportunity at my dream film school and it slipped through my hands. Uh, so it was very disappointing, very, very disappointing. Um, but, you know, I did return to New York, uh, still had my Columbia program to do. Uh, and that once I was able to get past the disappointment, I was, you know, basically telling myself, like, don't expect, um, <laughs> don't expect anything from AFI, but keep it pushing. Maybe film school is just not for you. Uh, which brings us to my next and current chapter of my life and something that we've talked about in the conference already, which I believe is so important, discipline. This is where I'm at. Discipline, not the most fun word to say, not the most fun thing to have to do. But I do think that it is critical and it really is the missing link. Discipline is what takes us all from goals to results and from prayer to progress. And what do I mean by that? Discipline really comes down to the choices that we make that allow us to um, walk in God's purpose for our lives. You know, God has already laid out the path, but our choices determine how closely along that path we're following. And so, you know, discipline. I realized was holding me back in school and my health and wellness journey um, creatively as an artist. I mean, if I had been more disciplined, it probably wouldn't have taken me 10 years to finish The Last Messengers. But, you know, it's, it's these honest looks that you have to give to yourself. And um, this space uh, was really uncomfortable as the waiting season often is for many of us. Uh, and again, I, you know, I had that decision looming for AFI, but I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really um, hopeful for it at this point. Um, but I was happy to discover that my dream had been delayed, but not denied. Um, I was about exactly where I am now still in my, you know, apartment here in New York with Columbia. And this is literally my acceptance letter, which even looking at it now is really crazy that this happened that God opened this door. Um, I'd been accepted. And, you know, my reactions were all over the place, shocked, happy, overwhelmed, just joyful, relieved, excited. Um, I was, I was just over, overjoyed. And um, it really, it really was a, a huge moment for me. And, and with one click, the trajectory of my life completely changed. Um, and I felt immediately affirmed also that this was not just my dream, but a God dream especially given the fact that, you know, I had what I felt <laughs> stepped out on faith in some way in terms of the sample that I submitted, you know, faith-based content, um, content that I felt God put um, very specifically and very directly on my heart. Um, it was just, it was just fantastic. I remember crying, of course. I called my mom, uh, and FaceTimed her and was crying and she had to read the letter just like she had to read the letter for Columbia. It was just so so like <laughs> beyond happy um and this this really um has been a huge huge turning point for me and I'm super super excited um but I also was very surprised that one of my initial reactions to this acceptance was actually being incredibly still like I was not really rushing to post it like on IG or LinkedIn I wasn't gushing about it to every single person I like talk to people and friends and family that, you know, knew that I was on this journey and that I really wanted this and I told them, but, you know, I knew that because this was so, such a intentional thing that God was doing for me, um, that we were in this together, uh, that it was something to protect and it was something to take responsibility for and to guard and to, and to be responsible with. Um, and, you know, I, I knew, because I've been on both sides of the coin that this could have easily been another rejection email. Like I was humbled by the fact that God, um, that God opened this door and some doors are so big that only God can open them. Um, and so I remember being extremely still waiting for a word, waiting for God to basically tell me what's next. Cause you know, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to finish the program I'm in now? And somehow between now and the end of the summer, move across the country. Like I had so many questions. Um, and I want to share a verse that really, really encompasses that part of my journey and being still. And it's Psalms 4610. Be still 
and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, sometimes God is asking us to just be still, to slow down, to get out of our own way, and to allow him to speak directly to us or even through others. And it's what we do with that that really makes all the difference. Um, you know, I'm grateful in some ways that we've had uh, at least opportunity to quarantine or to take more time intentionally in deep thought, perhaps, um, hopefully in prayer, um, to really reconnect to God and to have the opportunity to get out of, you know, these ideas, these timelines we set for ourselves, these goals, I need to do this by this age, I want to, you know, have these things, uh, I want to advance, I want to go to the next level, and sometimes God is just asking us to be still, um, and to take the peace that he gives us, and to be comforted by it, so this is, um, the stage that I'm in now, <laughs> preparation season is definitely, you know, put your head down, do the work, stay inspired, stay hopeful, and get ready. Uh, and, you know, perhaps this is the season that all of us are in in some way or another. Um, you know, here I am basically recommitting my life to God, uh, to myself, and to my faith, um, to God, and that uh, I know this was an act of God. I know that this was a blessing that He opened the door for me for. And, you know, there's things about that that scare me. I'm not going to lie. There's responsibility that comes with not only being a child of God, but walking in that. And, you know, how does that look in Hollywood? How does that look in entertainment? Is there a right and wrong way to do that? Uh, allowing God to guide me to that. Um, and then also with the opportunity to share myself and my art as a filmmaker, always drawing my worth and value from him and not external successes, external um, praise. Uh, I think we talked about the power of suggestion on uh, the last session. Uh, people are going to have opinions. People are going to have things uh, that they want to share, but remaining rooted in God. Um, and then also recommending myself to myself, um, taking care of myself better. Adulting is hard. Like I'm not that beyond like Hampton. Like I'm still in the mindset of, you know, certain things in that transition of really being responsible for yourself, whether it is health and fitness, whether it's taking more rest, more rest, um, those things are game changers. And I also want to just be kinder to myself and not um, expect myself to be perfect. Um, because, you know, God is the only um, perfect being and, you know, there's nothing perfect on this side of heaven. Um, so allowing God to lead me into, um, into increase in the areas that I decrease and to be humbled by the fact that I'm not perfect and allow that to draw me closer to God. Um, and then also to my faith, you know, being committed and deeply rooted um, to this faith journey, understanding it is a long haul, it's the long game, this thing is not, that should never just be a season, that really should encompass our whole life, and, um, and faith is going to get me through all these things I don't know, um, and, you know, I'm embracing that I don't know, and that I don't have to know, and I don't have to have it all figured out, that is what God is here to do, is to, to lead and direct us, um, and so, the next couple months uh, of my life are gonna be um, tremendous. I'm having to finish my Columbia program. I uh, start an internship with MTV next summer, which I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. And I'll be figuring out how to uh, move to LA, like these you know, financial things for sure, looking at scholarships, um, things that are gonna help me with tuition, things that are gonna help me just you know, have an apartment, finding a roommate, all these things. But I want to, um, to always, you know, be able to be still even now and to realize that God opened this door and he's going to walk with me through it. Um, and so many of us uh, that came today are, are in a season of our own. Maybe it's a waiting season. Maybe there are some of you that are waiting to hear from a grad program. Or maybe God is calling you to move to another state or even another country or maybe you have a calling on your life that scares you and surprises you and, and it makes you worried or confused. Um, maybe you're in between blessings um, and you're just waiting for God to show you what to do in this season or to draw nearer to you for clarity and peace. Um, and I want to share a final verse with you all that I hope will give us all the assurance and encouragement that we need. 
Romans 8, 25, but if we wait, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. The waiting season can be long, can be difficult, confusing, all these different things, but we should make sure that we are getting as aligned with God's will and purpose for our lives as we can. It takes prayer and dedication. It takes waiting for a word um, and getting out of our own way and surrendering our plan to God's plan. Uh, then we should be as obedient as we can to God, whether it's in isolation or whatever season that we're in. Um, the choices that we make uh, show God how much we trust him and allow him to intercede and intervene into our lives. And um, then, uh, of course, lastly, we should try to be as disciplined as possible through the process. Um, the process is not often the fun part. It's definitely not the comfortable part, but it's really where the change happens and really where God causes us to increase and to elevate. So I wanna encourage you all with those words. Um, I wanna encourage you all uh, just to be still and to wait for God um, and to realize that if you're in a waiting season right now, you have all this you know, time, make sure that it is time well spent. I look forward to hearing from everybody what your reflections are on this workshop and all of them. Uh, and before we join our main session, I want to take this chance to pray us out. Uh, so if everyone would join me in a word of prayer, we're gonna go ahead and begin. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to fellowship with women of God, with women after your own heart, with your creation, God, that you have set us all apart for your purpose and your plan, and that you have laid out foundation for our lives and that you know us uh, in our innermost thoughts, in our hearts. Uh, you know us better than we know ourselves. And we're so grateful for that because it's so easy to listen to the, what the world or others have to say about us, but we should always remind ourselves that we are your children um, and that you are clinging to us and therefore we should always seek to cling to you, Jesus. Thank you so much that we have this opportunity to talk about the waiting season, that we have the chance to reflect on our lives and to imagine what beautiful things will come out of this season. Um, we know that diamonds are produced under pressure and that process that you bring us through is our, our pressure cooker, uh, is something that allows us to come out on the other side of it, a new and renewed creation. Um, and we thank you so much that there's, pur there's purpose and there's intentionality in all of it. And so I ask that whatever season each of us are in in our lives, maybe some of us are waiting for a job, maybe some of us are waiting for a spouse, maybe some of us are confused and just wondering what all of this COVID <laughs> stuff is about what we're supposed to be doing in this season, how this can even lead to a blessing, God. But I, I hope that uh, by sharing my story, by other speakers sharing their stories, that we would be reminded that you are a God of purpose and intentionality. And you do not let things happen by happenstance, God, um, and that you are, are calling us to greater things. And, and if we are in a season that is uncomfortable, that you do not delight in that. You do not delight in seeing us struggle uh, or be lonely or, or sad or anxious, God. You are calling us to live life more abundantly. And I ask that we all would receive that assurance, receive that peace and bask in it. Um, allow the words discipline and surrender to your plan and to your will to give us peace uh, more than they give us tension or, or anxiety or worry, God. Um, I just ask that you would draw ever nearer to us and that we would draw your ever nearer to you, Lord. And I thank you so much for everything that has been shared and everything that will, share, will be shared. Um, and that all of us will leave this conference better than when we came, God, and just ready and assured that you're going to open the door of blessings for each and every one of us. In your name I pray, amen.